John uh, address the death of Christ? Ah, good question. Yes, that was on um, my mind here. Yeah, so the Quran, um, uh, according to the dominant opinion, uh, categorically rejects the crucifixion of Jesus. So the Quran says, وَمَا قَتَلُهُ وَمَا سَلَبُهُ So the children of Israel did not kill him nor crucify him. So the dominant opinion is that Christ wasn't crucified, that somehow God saved him. Now the Quran does not go into details as to what happened, and neither does the Prophet. So later Muslim scholars, they have these sort of theories as to what actually happened. So the most dominant theory, again, this is not the definitive answer. There is no definitive answer as to what actually happened. But the most dominant theory is that a disciple was transfigured to look like Christ, and he was the one crucified. Um, now, if you look at Christian history, we know that there was a group in the first century called the Basilidians uh, who actually believed that Simon of Cyrene was crucified instead of Christ. This is obviously a, a pre-Islamic belief prevalent in the Christian community, end of the first century, early second century. Who's Simon of Cyrene? Well, if you read the, four, if you read the three Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, it says that when they were going to crucify Jesus, uh, for some reason, they, the Romans pulled a man out of the crowd, right? And uh, Christian tradition teaches that Jesus was just so exhausted he couldn't carry the cross, right? It doesn't mention that in the New Testament. So it's quite enigmatic, but for some reason, they pulled this man out of the crowd, and Simon of Cyrene, and they compelled him to bear the cross. Right? So there was a group of Christians in the first century who said Simon was in fact crucified because they saw the death of the Messiah as sort of an oxymoron. How can the Messiah die? This was the main reason why most Jewish elements did not believe in Christ. Because according to their understanding, at least, of the Old Testament, the Messiah cannot be killed. He won't dash his foot against the stone, as it says in Psalm 91. And interestingly, none of the passages in the Old Testament that Christians will use as proof texts of the death of the Messiah, the most famous of which is, of course, Isaiah, 9, Isaiah 53, the suffering servant, the word Messiah does not appear in any of those texts. So the interpretation is somewhat open. But in Psalm 20, verse 6, very interestingly, uh, David writes, in Hebrew he says, David says, I know that God will save his Messiah. He shall hear him uh, from his holy heaven and save him with the saving power of his right hand. Right? So this is, um, so I would say that the Muslim belief about the Messiah is uh, in line with sort of pre-Christian Jewish expectations of the Messiah. So that's a dominant opinion, that he wasn't, he wasn't crucified or killed. Uh, there's, uh, there's other opinions that it might have been Barabbas. So if you look at early Alexandrian manuscripts of the Gospel of Matthew, um, were actually given the first name of Barabbas. You know. So this whole incident of you know, the Pontius Pilate releasing a Jewish prisoner, this seems to be sort of unhistorical. Uh, you know, you have two sort of, you know, on Yom Kippur, you have two lambs, you kill one, you set one free. It's, it's sort of something going on like that. But if we just entertain the story for now, apparently the Romans had this custom where they would release a Jewish prisoner as an act of goodwill before Passover. Uh, so they bring out two prisoners. One is named Barabbas, one is named Jesus of Nazareth, right? So according to the, the popular story in Matthew, um, you know, who shall I release to you? And the crowd cheers, and they release Barabbas, and they crucify Jesus, right? And what's interesting is the word Barabbas is not his name, it's a title. Barabbas in Aramaic is Bar Abba. Bar Abba means the son of the father. So Barabbas is not some ordinary brigand. He is a messianic claimant. He was from Galilee. The Galileans were known for two things. Fishing and zealotry. Or as the Romans would say, fishing and terrorism. Right? Because they would, they would organize these insurrections against the Roman occupiers. Jesus is from Galilee. You know, the Galileans also had this sort of accent that was very... Uh, <laughs> Uh, noticeable, you know, sort of like a, 
if someone you know speaks, you know, if someone is from the south or something, and they start speaking, to, oh, this guy's. It, it was very noticeable, and the rest of the Jews, at least the Jews in Judea, would sort of characterize them as sort of peasants. You know, they just they don't know anything, and they're all violent, and you know. So that's why it says in the Gospel of Matthew that when Peter spoke in Judea, in Jerusalem, from his accent, they said, "Are you are you Galilean?" So that's why they said, "No, you're you're his disciple then," just from the way he spoke. But anyway. <clears throat> so, Barabbas is a messianic claimant. Now, early, as I said, early manuscripts of Matthew actually give us Barabbas' first name. Does anyone know what his first name was? Was also Jesus. <laughs> so, why did later scribes remove Jesus, Barabbas' first name in the Gospel of Matthew? Because there might have been some confusion, maybe. Who was actually crucified? As you can imagine, what is Pilate actually saying now? Who shall I release to you? Yeshua bar Abba, Jesus, the Son of the Father, or Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, who is called Christ. It's the same name and the same title. You know, release Jesus and kill Jesus. What? <laughs> so, many scholars believe that the first name of Barabbas was removed for reverential reasons, but it could be that there was confusion amongst the people in Jerusalem at the time as who was actually crucified. However, there is a minority opinion that Jesus was in fact killed amongst Muslim scholars. The minority opinion. There's a good book on this by Todd Lawson. He's a, he's a good scholar, Todd Lawson. It's called Crucifixion in the Quran. And his contention is the first exeget ever to say that Jesus was replaced on the cross, which is called literal docetism, by the way. The first exeget ever to say that was a Christian exeget, not a Muslim exeget. It was a man named John Damascene, who was an 8th century Christian scholar who lived in Damascus. He was the first one to write a systematic refutation of Islam. So his interpretation of that text is that someone was replaced, and then it seems like Muslim scholars sort of followed suit after him. But there is a minority opinion that the meaning of the verse, they did not kill him nor crucify him, but it was made to appear so unto them, is that Jesus might have been put on a cross, but he didn't die from his injuries, that God seized his soul while he was on the cross and then returned it to him possibly three days later. This might explain why Pilate in the Gospel of Mark was so surprised that Christ had died already. You know, in the Gospel, it's only mentioned by Mark. They come back to Pilate and say, he's dead. He says, already? And he marveled, it says, because he was a, he, he made, he was, he, his whole business is crucifying Jews, right? And I, and, um, Josephus says that at one point they actually ran out of lumber in Jerusalem because they're crucifying so many Jews. So he knew what it took to crucify someone to have them, what it took to kill them. Yet he marveled. Um, and this might explain, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. It seems like he's sort of willingly giving up the ghost or knows it's going to be taken from him and then returned to him. So there's an opinion like that. Because there's other places in the Quran uh, where Jesus... Uh, where God says to Jesus, for example, in Mimotawafika, and the, you can very easily translate that as, oh Jesus, I'm going to take your soul from you. You don't have to, you don't have to twist the text. I mean, that's, that's a primary definition of that active participle. You know, you don't have to perform what I call, uh, what do I call it? Hermeneutical larboarding. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you choke the text enough, It'll say whatever you want. It to say. <laughs> right? So I would say there is a genuine difference of opinion as to what the Quran is saying about the crucifixion. The dominant opinion seems to be is not seems to be the dominant opinion is that Christ was not crucified. What happened? Nobody knows. There's a minority opinion that he might have been killed, but his soul was returned to him by God, and his resurrection is proof that he indeed was the Messiah. Right? Uh, and then he commissioned his disciples to go and spread the gospel. Both positions are correct, according to the Quran. In my opinion, I mean, there, I think there would be some Muslims that would disagree with me on that.